Okay, so now we're going to take a look at some ratio style questions. And generally ratios are displayed numerically uh, by having two numbers separated by a colon. And generally the questions in the exam will actually have two parts to it. The first will be a statement like this one that the ratio of blue caps to red caps is 2 to 7. And then the second part will be if there were 500 caps altogether, how many red caps would we have? And that sort of the second part would be the question based on information that was um, made available in the, in the statement. But what's important before we get into some of those equations is, is to make sure that we always allocate the first item, in this case um, the blue caps, to the first number that's mentioned in the statement. Okay, so blue caps to red caps is 2 to 7. And it makes sense that the red caps being the second uh, item mentioned would relate to the second number mentioned. So we just line up the first word uh, with the first number and the second word with the second number. If we don't do that, we're going to there's no way we're going to get the correct answer. All right, so again here, uh, blue caps relates to the first number, red caps relates to the second number, and then we're able to get started on formulas to work out the answer to the question. That will appear in the second part of the uh, of the question. All right, so let's have a look at a couple of examples and figure out how this this works. Okay, so let's set it up like this now. We've got two blue caps and seven red caps. The wording of the question might start like that with a statement, but then the actual question follows, and it could be something like, given that in mind, if you had 90 caps in total, how many of those 90 caps would be blue? And that's generally how the question is worded. So let's forget about the 90 for a moment. We'll come back to that, obviously it's important. But for now, let's just assume that all we have are two blue caps and seven red caps. Okay, if that was the case, altogether, just simply by adding the two blue and the seven red, we would have nine caps. Okay, now the question was, we've actually got a total of 90 caps. And so how many blue caps do we have? All right, so what we could do, keeping in mind that this is just, let's imagine that's one group or one pile. Let's, let's call it a box. We've got one little box on the ground with nine caps in it. Now we need to have 90 in total caps. So let me just go over to the next page here. If we had boxes on the ground and we put two blue caps and seven red caps in every one of those boxes, until we had 90 caps altogether, so there's a total of nine in this one, of course, and there's nine in this one, and there's nine in this one, and we would do that until we had a total of 90 caps. Now, how, what would we do? Well, we'd put down 10 boxes. We just multiply it by 10. Now, there's not 10 boxes here, but just to illustrate it, because I would just want you to get this mental picture. If I multiplied that um, by 10, I would have 10 boxes, each of them with nine caps in them. And we know that within that box there's going to be two blue, two blue, two blue, so two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and so on and so on. Now of course we don't need to do it that way, we don't need to put boxes down because we can simply multiply nine by ten in order to get to ninety. Now the other way that you might have to do it is to say well if there are a total of ninety caps, how many times would this one pile of nine go into that. Okay, like so. Now we know that's going to be 10. Okay, so just wanted to give you that mental picture of the boxes on the floor. So it's really a simple multiplication. So if there are 90 altogether, we know that that means there are 10 boxes, nine in each. And we also simply need to now multiply these individual numbers by the same amount. So if I took my two blue caps and I multiplied it by 10 boxes, I know that I'm going to have 20 blue caps in total. If I did the same to the red caps, I know that I've got 10 boxes here and there are seven red caps in each one of those boxes, I know that I'm going to have 70 red caps altogether. Now if, if my calculations are correct, I should be able to add the blue and the red together to equal the total amount, okay, which we've been able to do there. So in the beginning we had just the two and the seven uh, individual colors and which of course gave us a total of nine caps. But when we were asked to determine how many red or blue we would have in a total of 90, 
we simply had to multiply this number uh, to get it up to this number. Okay, and, and often what you'll have to do is actually divide that number into the total to tell you which number you need to multiply by. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, but let me do a couple of quick ones to get the hang of this and then we'll start adding some actual questions into the, into the mix now. Okay, here's the information for the next question. Now, if that's all we have, we've only got seven tall people and four short people in one group, we have 11 people in total. Now, if that changes, then we're gonna have a need to do those calculations. So let's assume that they tell us there are four groups with a ratio of seven to four. So we may need to then multiply this by four in order to come up with a total number of people of 44. Okay, now, now that we have this particular uh, number here, we need to use that and multiply the others by the same amount to keep it at the same ratio, keep the proportions the same. So seven fours would be 28, four fours would be 16. Now, if I've done it correctly and I've kept my ratios the same as the original ratio, then this should equal the total amount of people, of course, which it does when we add them together. All right, so that's just a, just a simple sample to go through the, um, the calculations and the steps. I might need to determine this number in a question. It might actually ask me for this number, the total. I might be asked to, to work out the total number of short people, you know, if there were four groups or something to that effect, or I might be asked to work out this particular number. Okay, depending on the wording of the question, one of these boxes needs to be determined. But let's do a couple more. And you need to stick with me because there are a couple of little tricky questions where this formula is still the same, but we've got to take a couple of careful steps to make sure that we don't uh, use the wrong information and come up with the wrong uh, answer. So just stick with me. We'll do one more simple one like this. Okay, so now we've got apples and oranges. It really doesn't matter what it is. It could be fish, it could be shovels, it could be tall people, redheads, it could be, you know, anything. It doesn't really matter but the ratio is important. So we've got a ratio of apples to oranges of 25 to nine. So for every 25 apples, we have nine oranges. Let's assume that that's all we have, 25 apples and um, nine oranges. So that'll give us a total of 34 pieces of fruit. All right, so we may need to work out a grand total. We might need to work out uh, a total of apples if they increase or even if it works out as a minus, or we may need to work out the total number of oranges. So I mean, it also could be this one here. Okay, so let's assume that we're asked to determine uh, if each person picks, oh, let's say, I don't know, get five boxes. Each person picks five boxes with a ratio of 25 apples to nine oranges, how many apples will be collected? So I, I know that five, is the number of boxes that's going to be uh, collected. And so I start with five. So five, 34, 350, five, four, so 20. So 170 would be the total uh, pieces of fruit picked if we had five boxes with a ratio of 25 to nine. Now that I have this five, I need to keep the ratios the same. So I've got to multiply the other two numbers, the apples and oranges by five individually. So five times 25, that's gonna be 125. And five nines are 45, so that's a little bit easier. Now, if I've kept these ratios the same, the ones that I built, the ratio that I started with, 125 plus 45, 160, 170, should equal 170. Okay, so, so they're all of the boxes of information that I've been able to work out by taking these steps. And the wording of the question will determine which of those boxes we need to we need to find the answer to. But let me just show you this. All right. So essentially, the first step is to add these two together. Then we need to work out. I mean, depending on the question, if we've got five groups like we had in this one, well, we then need to work this out, and then we apply the same multiplication to the other numbers to ensure that we keep the ratios the same. All right, next one will be a little bit trickier, and I'm gonna take this straight out of the ASA practice book, because um, this one involves a slightly different approach to here, 
uh, and you'll see as we as we go through the wording of the actual question. All right, so I'm looking at the practice reasoning tests in the ASA handout, the booklet, with the practice uh, questions in it that you can find in the resources area. And on page 18, numerical reasoning practice test, question number four is this one. A person fishing had to throw back three out of every four fish they caught because the fish were undersized. Okay, so that's simply given us our ratio. So let me change my color back to here. That's given us our ratio. And then the next part is if 12 fish were able to be kept, how many fish were caught altogether? Okay, so that becomes our question. All right, now this is a bit tricky. You've got to be careful here. You see the three and you see the four and you might assume that the ratio might need to be drawn like that. Okay, now we've got to be careful of that. Three out of every four fish that were caught um, had to be thrown back as it says here. So three out of every four have to be thrown back. So in that case, three, we'll just put TH for throw back, and given there was a total of four, it means that one can be kept. Okay, if I add the ones that have to be thrown back to the ones I can keep, that gives me the total number, which was displayed here. Okay, so let's go and look at it like this. 3 to 1, throwing them back and keeping them. There's the ratio to begin with. Okay, now if we just go back to our question, we're asked to find if 12 fish were able to be kept, how many were caught all together? So that's our question, how many all together? Alright, I know that by adding those two I'm going to get 4, and it's telling me that I can keep 12. I can keep 12. Well, 1 multiplied by 12, well that's just going to be 12. So that's pretty straightforward. And because I've done that there, I need to do the same with these other sections to ensure that the ratios, the proportions, all stay the same size. So 48 is there. Okay, now I need to do it over here as well. 12 threes, that's going to be 36. If I've done it right, I should be able to add those together to get to 48, and that's correct. So the question was, how many would need to be caught all together if you were able to keep 12? Well, all together would be 48. Okay, so there's the sort of steps in the process. A little bit different. I mean, look, essentially we've done the same thing really. We've just we've just we've done the same steps, but where that one was tricky and I wanted to use this one as an example is that the wording of the question can throw you out and you just got to be careful not to just look at the numbers because when we see the 4 and the 3, we may have completely missed that the ratio is actually, you know, in relation to the number we can keep compared with the number we can throw out and this doesn't really go into this position here because it is the total number you know in one group as we've discussed earlier so i hope that makes sense because that's a bit of a, a little bit of a tricky one only in that we need to read carefully the question that's presented to us okay so let's wrap this video up i hope you found that helpful have a look in the resources area or the workbook to find the practice questions now for ratio questions and when you've been through that practice sheet, um, we'll get back together in the next video and go through the questions and answers together. Mm -hmm.